Bureaucracy in Pakistan is considered to be one of the most important pillar of the state. Civil services of Pakistan chooses best of the candidates, train them both physically and mentally and make them the most competent officers. Still, bureaucracy is tagged along with corruption, nepotism and power hunger. Why Pakistan could not develop its bureaucracy? Why Pakistan is lagging behind the world? Why Pakistan lacks good governance? To discuss all these issues, we have with us the most competent officer in bureaucracy, Mr. Hamza Shafiqat, Deputy Secretary, Establishment Division. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. Thank you so much. I feel honored that you've called me as a very competent officer. I am just an average officer. Thank you so much. Sir, please tell our viewers about your professional background, about your achievements and about your trainings that you have been taking in various provinces. Uh, I joined the civil services uh, back in 2006. Uh, I was allocated uh, district management group, which has later been uh, renamed as Pakistan Administrative Service. And uh, after that, I was posted uh, in Government of Sindh. I have served as assistant commissioner uh, in a couple of districts in uh, Government of Sindh. Then I was uh, promoted and posted as additional deputy commissioner in Islamabad, uh, where I served for two years and then I served in Capital Development Authority for uh, three years and presently I am working with the establishment division. And the establishment division actually does not have anything to do with the word establishment. That establishment is something else. This establishment division is basically the human resource department of the entire federal services. Educationally, I was trained as an engineer. I completed my engineering from uh, GIK, Ghulam Isa Khan Institute, and I completed my uh, Master's of Philosophy in Public Policy from National Defense University. And other than that, I've been trained by the Civil Services Academy. I, I'm currently also I'm being trained by the National School of Public Policy. But despite that, I still say that the time I spent in Sindh, I had a wonderful time. The people of Sindh are the most hospitable people in Pakistan. I learned their language. They were, they were initially, they were not very welcoming of, of a Punjabi officer. But later, when, when they realized that I'm working hard for their uh, benefits, so they accepted me and I, I enjoyed my time over there. I stayed in Rodi, I stayed in Mirpur Mathelo. Uh, it's, a, it's a town in Ghotki. And uh, there I was made in charge of all the uh, hospital, small hospitals in the district. And, and the challenge was that almost more than 30 of the hospitals were occupied by the local landlords. And I could even, I still have those pictures where they had uh, kept cattle in the hospitals. And it was very difficult for me, but eventually uh, things started flowing because my intentions were right. We actually took out all the cattle and we put medical officers and female medical officers over there. So in that, in that sense, I think uh, 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 it was a very good time for me. And now, actually, what, what's the reason why was I posted to Government of Sindh? Many, many officers and many people who are not uh, in the civil services, they often ask me question that why is a Punjabi officer sent to Sindh or to Balochistan? So my answer is that, you know, Pakistan is a federation and it is important for the federation to strengthen uh, the units which are the provinces and they have to you know keep in harmony so the best of officers they are sent into other provinces so that they can show to the other people of that province that people from Punjab are not that bad similarly the people of Sindh when they come and serve here in Punjab the people of Punjab come to know that yeah, the people of Sindh are also very good and they are hard working and they are honest so therefore, therefore it's very important for to create an inter-provincial harmony so being a civil servant of Pakistan and having experience of almost 10 years now, what areas of improvement would you suggest that you think that civil services should bring these improvements in our system so that we could achieve good governance in our country? I think uh, what area, I think every area, there is a margin of improvement in almost everything. You name it, it's, uh, either it's the law and order, it's health, it's education, it's social welfare. Every every department needs a lot of improvement, and I and I feel that there is a huge decline uh, in in the delivery of public services o over the past few decades, and there are very uh, various reasons for it. But personally speaking, even despite all the challenges, I think that civil servants do have the space to make their to make improvements uh, in the system, and for that, I think uh, there are only two things which are needed. One is creativity another is innovation if an officer is creative and he's innovative and he has the will to do work he can do a massive improvement in his areas for example 
uh, as i was telling you that i when i joined ghotki uh, as head of the uh, primary healthcare system it was it was an impossible task and i could just have said ke yaar mujhe kaam hi nahi karne dete local landlords they do not they are not willing to work police is not cooperating with me i could have just said that but instead i used my innovation and i used my mind and applied my mind that what should i do to make people come with me and join me and improve the things so what i what what the idea in my mind was to make a community support group with at every hospital so when i went into a village i had a meeting with every one of the people who were uh, the landlords and other people important people and i convinced them to take the ownership of the hospital i asked them that they will monitor the uh, attendance of the staff and i asked them that whatever budget we will uh, uh, give to the hospital they will look after it so in that sense they they thought that probably they are the owners of this health facility and therefore they helped me a lot in vacating that facility so uh, as all of us know that only those people are selected for civil services who are the most brilliant most intelligent and most competent among the others so but when they become the civil servants they do not deliver up to the mark just like you have said that most of the officers do not use their innovation and creativity to perform the tasks that they are doing why do you think that this change happens during the tenure of their services for pakistan i completely agree with you that uh, the perception about the civil services is that although federal public service commission they select the best they select the cream of the entire nation but even then uh, somehow unfortunately over a period of time the same civil servants are unable to deliver they are unable to provide the services which are expected out of them but let me let me you know correct some facts over here first of all the entire civil services of pakistan there there almost if we exclude the armed personnel uh, there are almost 1 million uh, uh, bureaucrats in the country including low level employees and senior level employees but out of 1 million uh, employees of the government the css officers which are the central superior services officers they are just almost less than 9000 so in, in the entire grand structure of the civil service of pakistan out of only less than 9 or 8% are from the central superior services and rest are, are either uh, from the provincial services or they are either from the ranks or they have just got inducted through some other manner so in that sense if uh, the impression or the perception of the civil services it is not just of the central superior services officers it is of the entire bureaucracy so even we have to bear the brunt and we have to take the blame of the officers who are not even civil servants who are not even css officers so so first thing we have to make it clear that all civil all css officers they are not corrupt i think they are very competent and government spends a lot of them they are continually being trained even from uh, 17 to 18 they have to go to the common training programs and special training programs and then they have mid, mid career management programs but the issue is with the non css officers who are neither trained Uh, who in, who uh, whose induction is also very uh, uh, dubious so in that sense first thing we have to keep in mind that uh, that impression is probably it's it's a sweeping statement if you say that all css officers are corrupt but having said that i still agree and i admit that over a period of time uh, the civil servants they lack they start lacking their initiative they start becoming corrupt although there is no research on it but that is what perception is so why is that there are three reasons i think there are three important reasons for that first of all is that the the salary of the civil servants it is not equal although they work a lot they they their lot of work is expected out of them but their salary has is not up to the mark so the first reason which makes them lack initiative is lack of salary and that is why they have to do some other ventures they'll try to do some business or they'll try to teach somewhere and they they try to look for other means to survive so th- first thing is that i think government uh, we have to do something about the salary second thing is that after 1973 the constitutional protection which was given to civil servants it has been withdrawn now the entire civil service is subordinate to to the political leadership and therefore it has been seen that uh continuous political pressure on the police on the district administration on the uh, uh tax collection authorities the political interference uh, 
it 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 is it is a huge cause of uh, frustration in, in the civil service so probably it, it's about time that if we want to uh, make uh, the civil service is more responsible i think the political uh, interference has to be somewhat regularized in a manner and the third thing uh, uh, which i think is that over a period of time css officers they start becoming stale uh, because of uh, the surrounding because of their environment in which environment they are working probably some of the times their offices are not very good some of the time they are uh, howled on by the media they are they are even answerable to fia they are even answerable to nab they have to answer the public accounts committee and they even have to answer the ministers they have to answer the courts the supreme court the high court so in that sense there are a lot of factors which inhibit the work of a civil servant and eventually he decides over a period of time that yeah i can't do much and i should just go with the flow because if i try to do something different i'll be objected by people so probably these are the three reasons which are on the top of my head so you have been a part of city administration as well please tell our viewers about the role of city administration during protests dharnas and processions um i have stayed as the additional deputy commissioner uh, in islamabad for 2 years and it was during my time that uh, the tehreek e uh, minhaj ul quran uh, professor dr tahirul qadri sahab came here uh, with a huge uh, uh, with a huge number of people with him okay so first first of all let us decide what is the role of district administration the primary role of district administration in a city is to maintain law and order and what do we mean by law and order law means that it is their responsibility to see that all laws are being implemented properly traffic laws police laws local laws special laws agriculture all all those local and special laws are being implemented it's their responsibility and the second prime responsibility of district administration in islamabad is to maintain order and by order i mean that it's their responsibility to see that there is peace there is no chaos in the city and the regular business is going on as per the schedule it is their prime responsibility so in 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 the in such an event when there is a huge protest or a situation where there is a threat to law and order uh, and when there are where a huge number of people they come into islamabad and they try to bl block the roads so the first responsibility come uh, comes on the head of uh, the deputy commissioner and it is his responsibility to ensure that the life and property of the people is saved and uh, there is no hurdle in movement of the people because there can be any emergency people have to move to hospitals they have to use ambulances and all that <coughs> so in that sense the role of district administration is very important so now coming to your question is uh, that uh, how do they manage it well there are the well uh, it's a, it's a very technical thing to do and it does not start it uh, on the event it it starts much before the event for example as soon as we come to hear uh, that uh, pro uh, a protest is about to come after one month our work starts from there we we start meeting with the local uh, traders we start meeting with the unions we start meeting with the ulemas we start meeting with the representatives of the political parties and we convince them and we try to push them and pull them into coming into terms so our work starts much before that and and we try our best that the protest does not take place we try to solve their problems for example there was once a problem that population from pindi they entered onto the igp road of islamabad and they blocked all the road why because there was no gas there so instead of just fighting them or instead of just standing there or instead of sending police to them we approach the people and we ask what is the problem they said sir gas nahi aa rahi so we we said that instead of blocking the road let's make a delegation and we'll take you to the gas authorities and we'll try to solve the problem so the problem 90% of the times the problem gets solved but 10% of the times when there are some political games going on and there are higher vested interests of the people in that sense then the district it, it's then the district administration cannot control them and then probably the government has to intervene and then they try to come on terms uh, at some level so that is their role all of us know that civil servants enjoy high authority and great powers but obviously it comes with some threats have you ever received any life threats for your assignments that you have taken over i have faced uh, uh, three times i have faced uh, death threats first was when i was posted in uh, during my first posted in ratodero 
there i i took action against a local uh, dacoit he had occupied uh, a government building and he had uh, put buffaloes in it and i went there and in my innocence i just uh, broke all the locks and i got all the people who were sitting there arrested and there they asked me that ke hum na tumhe chhodenge aur na tumhare beevi bachon ko chhodenge and i was not married at that time so i said ke yaar mere beevi bachon ko to tum jo marzi kar lo <laughs> meri meri khair hai so that was the first threat the last threat which i received was when i took action against uh, the land mafia who had occupied uh, a huge a uh, track of land in the name of kachi basti that was in i11 and uh, there there were people who who belonged to terrorist organizations and there were people who who were from fata and there were even people who were from afghanistan and they thought that it although it was not my decision it was an order given by the honorable high court and it was the decision of the ministry of interior to remove that uh, encroachment but when i did that they started threatening me and they even approached they somehow they came to know about the address of my house and they started setting uh, sending me letters and apparently uh, when you just talk about it it's not very serious but but the thing is when you see a letter which says ke hum tumhe nahi chhodenge or we'll kill you it it's uh, it's a traumatic experience especially for the wife and my kids and for family that ke yaar ye to this is something very serious but alhamdulillah i i still believe i have a strong faith that uh, life and death is decided by allah almighty only and as a civil servant it, it is my responsibility to take action with pure intentions in the interest of the public so uh, rest is with allah taala allah taala takes protection uh, of everyone sir in pakistan policy making is not adequately institutionalized do you agree with that i completely agree with you policy making in pakistan I agree it's very haphazard it is kind of an amorphous pro- uh, process what i have seen through my experience is that there are three kinds of forums through which a policy is made first forum is the bureaucratic forum where the ministry itself presents through files they present a present a policy which is eventually approved by the cabinet second type of policy making is donor driven it is the donors the uh, multilateral organizations the world bank the un and the other organizations they sponsor a policy for example the public procurement rules they were implemented in pakistan on the behest of world bank so that is the second type of policy making and the third type of policy making is which is done on the behest of lobbies and pressure groups for example if we want to get in tax exemption there will be a certain group who would pressurize and who would lobby uh, the people at the helm of affairs to you know evade at that tax or make a tax exemption so in that sense you write that it should have been the responsibility of the representatives of the public only but somehow it is not like that but to tell you the fact it it is not even happening in uh, america even in america it is not the congress which is making policy even there there is a, a trika of uh, uh, business uh, people the congress and the military bureaucracy all three of them come to some terms and then a policy is evolved so in that sense um, as it is happening all over the world uh, but i still agree with your point and i take it that uh, yes it's the responsibility of politicians and the bureaucracy i uh, although i belong to bur- uh, bureaucracy but i still say that we create hurdles in that and there are some very good politicians in pakistan and i think they should be given a chance to make policies because they are the actual representatives the bureaucracy they are not the representatives of the people we are selected and they are elected and we must uh, as per our constitution we must respect uh, their legitimacy so please share some memorable experience during your tenure at pakistan civil services academy okay right civil services academy um, i had a wonderful time there uh, it's it's a memorable time because that is the time where you are converted from from a student into an officer so in that sense it's a very interesting time but what the impression what i had before going to the academy i met a couple of my seniors from my engineering university and i told them that i am going for a training and and they told me ke yaar wahan pe to corruption karna sikhate hain na corruption 101 kya ye sikhate hain maine kaha nahi sir aisa nahi and then they said ke acha fir to tumhe saap banana sikhate honge and what i had in mind was that when i'll go there they'll treat me as an officer and they'll tell us that we are an elitist group blah 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 but that was not the case 
on the other hand our civil services academy it's 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 a state of the art institution in the sense that instead of making us a proud civil servant they impart this lesson into our minds rather they bombard this idea into our minds that we are servants and that we have to serve the public so in that sense it was very paradoxical for me that i have become an officer and they are telling me that you are a servant but over a period of time i realized that probably if the civil service wants to survive and if they want to do good to this country it's about time that we admit and we agree and we adapt to this concept that we are the servants of the people we have to serve them and we have to serve them in a manner in which they become delighted and they become happy so anyways uh, you are asking about uh, uh, my my any memorable experience in uh, civil services academy well we had a lot of experiences our uh, most toughest uh, thing which we had to do was to get up at 6 o'clock and go for physical training and uh, pt pt ke liye we had to get up and we had to dress up and we had to run around the grounds and then we had to dodge our pt instructor to somehow you know uh, so that we can shirk our uh, responsibility so there there were a lot of lot of events there uh, i think uh, but it is something which can instead of describing it it is something which should only be experienced because over there it, it's the first time when the people of all all the provinces come there and uh, we learn new things for example uh, in sindhi language uh apple is called a soof so whenever uh, we went out and i asked some of my sindhi friends ke sir do you want a soup because we went into a restaurant and they said ke nahi yaar idhar sev khane ka kaun sa time hai so in the, but in that sense uh, it was very good for us that we learned something from our uh, uh, brothers from kpk we learned something from our brothers from balochistan and it was very uh, positive environment uh, it is it is a place where there is uh, where we can see that there what is the strength in the federation we can see the commonalities but on the other hand obviously we also see that there is a huge difference between the upper class and the lower class people who had come from rural backgrounds they had uh, different opinions about us and the people who had come from uh, urban backgrounds they had different opinion about the people from rural background so in that sense it was very interesting Sir you launched a full scale operation against land mafia for illegal occupation of land and encroachments how far that operation was successful Alhamdulillah it was successful i think my my uh, time with the with the development authority and the land department was very successful our first achievement was that we were able to get land worth 17 billion rupees vacated and then on that land we we have a very good project running on that is called park and clear project and what were the problems the problems of land mafia land mafia works in two ways one one is the active way and the other is the passive way active way is that they actually encroach our lands and then they fight with us through courts and through active resistance but the most dangerous thing what they do is the passive resistance they try to bribe officials of cda of the development authority to 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 see that no project of cda is launched because when cda launches a project automatically it becomes number 1 because it has the best land in pakistan and the land of the other housing societies which are the private housing society it goes down so the first thing which is very dangerous that they do is that they try to bribe induce entice threat the officers of cda not to launch a housing project and they have been very successful in this because for the past 20 years cda has not been able to launch any single housing project so in that sense it was a huge success for us that we launched three huge projects one was a park and clay project we took possession of it and now we are in the process of giving it to the uh, uh, to the owners of the plot the second which we started was the sector e12 sector e12 was acquired back in 1987 but it was us we we took its possession in 2015 and uh, we had had it handed it over to the engineering department to start the process and after that we even launched three new sectors those were d13 e13 c13 c14 and c15 so in that sense i think uh, it was a huge achievement on our part that we were able to launch projects despite the passive resistance of uh, housing societies and land mafia what are the challenges challenges are that uh, you know they they are very strong they have uh, they have strong links in media they have strong uh, they try to threat us to 
they were they badly defamed me just because of my operation they tried to uh, sell the story to people that he is the head of mafia and he is trying to create plots for himself which was rubbish and altogether wrong because a civil servant cannot just take over plots there is a complete process on it and they they threatened my family they there was a huge campaign which went on in the media against me and it was called ke hamza shafqat land mafia ka sarbara hamza shafqat or and but uh, i stood firm and uh, and i i was very fortunate that my seniors were very they, they were very supportive uh, the our chairman cda maruf afzal saab our member administration amir ali ahmed saab both both are officers of impeccable uh, integrity they're very hard working officers and they took all the pressures and they allowed me to work so in that sense i think i think we did good sir uh, some countries like korea china Indonesia and Malaysia have developed their countries through their bureaucracy but that couldn't happen in the case of Pakistan what were the hampering factors do you believe you're very right and i think you should also include indonesia and malaysia in it i i had a re- recent chance to visit malaysia on a conference which was on public administration and i was shocked to see uh, the development and the progress that they have made in the last decade or so and uh, that is that is because of of the factor that they have made their bureaucracies independent number 1 they have they have set specific performance indicators for that their bureaucracy number 2 number 3 they are giving them good incentives and number 4 they are making their bureaucracy accountable in in korea or in singapore if you are unable to deliver you are kicked out of the service on the other hand in pakistan you a civil servant it's impossible for the government to kick out a civil servant for a civil servant to get out of job it it takes at least 7 6 to 7 years there there is an inquiry then there is a de novo inquiry then there is an appeal then there is a federal services tribunal and then there is a summary which goes up to the prime minister and then he can even go to the red petition so in that sense i think uh, bureaucracy of pakistan it does not have incentives to work number 1 and number 2 is not it's not even accountable properly and why is it not accountable because the process of kicking them out of the service is very long so if if we want to follow the model of singapore of model of lee kuan yew or the model of malaysia or korea what we have to do is strengthen our uh, bureaucracy we have to give more powers to the civil services but then make them more accountable if a person if a deputy commissioner is not delivering he should be kicked out of service if a police officer if an ig or an sho he is unable to control crimes he should be kicked out of his office he should not be just transferred on whimsical grounds so and and he should be paid well you know if if a if an inspector who has the power to investigate even the murder of the prime minister then i think he should be given a handsome salary because he is given immense responsibility immense authority so in that sense uh, if he is given good incentive and if he is make properly accountable i think uh, pakistan will change sir any message for micronox the leading it company in pakistan and also for fire my message for for the team who is working in micronox uh, the first thing uh, after after talking to them and after learning about micronox what i learned was that Uh, they are doing a lot of work in information technology the, their clients they are spread uh, all over the world they have uh, massive clients in in the us and uh, they have a lot of potential they can bring a lot of job opportunities to pakistan a lot of investment opportunities in pakistan so in that sense uh, they are doing a, a, a great work but the thing which actually inspired me a lot which i think was very impressive was their vision instead of their work i was more impressed by their vision and their vision vision normally the private companies they they are more interested in profit maximization but in their case they are more interested in the betterment of people in the economic progress of our country and in the development of pakistan so i think in that sense they are doing a wonderful job uh, their ceo mr asad rafi ms sehresh they they are very competent people i know them i've uh, i've worked with them as well and i think they are doing a wonderful job i wish them the very best of luck and i even uh, you know uh, uh, i i present myself to them that if ever i could be of any help to them in in making any public private partnership or doing some work with the government i'm always available because their work is of immense value to pakistan 
uh, I think we wish you all the best. Uh, the first thing which I want to tell you while I read this magazine, it is one of the very few magazines in Pakistan who are promoting positivity in Pakistan. I was very happy to see a group who are doing such a visionary work, such a positive work. When I was reading it, this magazine, it made me so happy. And I felt so proud of uh, our, our, our young uh, members of the FIRE magazine that they are such, doing such a wonderful job for the people of Pakistan and I think I think and I advise them to do something, to do some venture with, with the government of Pakistan or probably with ISPR so that this, uh, this work that they are doing, it should be projected properly to the rest of Pakistan. So and I, I, I wish them the best of luck, uh, the people who are working in FIRE I know uh, Mr. Asad, I know Ms. Shahrish, they, they are doing a wonderful job, they are highly competent and I, I, amazing group of people, they are doing an amazing job and I wish all of you the very best of luck. Thank you so much sir for sparing your time for FIRE TV. It was an honor meeting you and it was a useful and informative discussion not only for FIRE TV but for all of its viewers. Thank you once again. Thank you. So viewers, this was Mr. Hamza Shafkat, Deputy Secretary, Establishment Division, Government of Pakistan. Thank you so much for viewing. This is Sehrish Kamal from Fire TV Islamabad.